Now, without any further ado, I'd like to welcome our first speaker, um, Pam Richard. She's the co-director director of the Echo Justice Collaborative. She's the, um, which is a nonprofit organization based in Champaign. The Echo Justice Collaborative is the host of tonight's public forum. Now, Pam is an environmental and land use planner. From 1982 to 2008, she served as a senior planner and then the vice president and director of planning for the Chicago Area Planning Resources Incorporated. Her experience includes environmental impact analysis as well as public participation for large-scale public work projects under the, uh, the National Environmental Policy Act. And Pam will begin this program by providing an overview of the collage problem. Pam Richard. Thank you, Senator. And thank all of you for being present with us tonight. The Middle Fork is the crown jewel of East Central Illinois. In 1989, it was designated as a National Scenic River. And in 2018, just 30 years later, American Rivers, a national river conservation group, listed the Middle Fork as one of America's most endangered because of the coal ash threat. The 17.1 long stretch of this National Scenic River is surrounded by 8,400 acres of public open space. In fact, the only private land holding happens to be the one you see up there in red that is, in fact, owned by Dynagy. The area is heavily used by local residents and attracts people from all over the state. It is a centerpiece of Vermillion County and the uh, city of Danville, who both hope to draw on the river's assets for recreation and tourism. Dynagy purchased the Vermillion Power Station in 2000 and closed it in 2011. Originally built by Illinois Power, this coal plant produced electricity and generated good paying jobs. But burning coal creates waste. And over 55 years, more than 3.3 million cubic yards of coal ash was dumped in three unlined pits along the west bank of the river. How much waste is that? Well, it's enough to fill Chicago's Willis or Sears Tower nearly two times. Coal ash contains many harmful chemicals that cause birth defects, cancer, and neurological damage in humans and it can harm and kill wildlife, especially fish. The US EPA declared the 28, 2008 TVA coal ash spill a super fun site because of the contamination. All three pits are unlined and were built in the floodplain of this river, and the two oldest are leaking. The third, the new East Ash Pit, was constructed on top of existing bedrock. And although its sides are lined with clay, it is not considered a lined facility by the US EPA. And this pit sits over areas that were once mined, raising concerns over the potential for subsidence. In July of 2012, the Illinois EPA issued a notice of violation to Dynagy for exceeding class one groundwater standards for boron, manganese, sulfate, total dissolved solids, iron, and pH. These are indicative of coal ash pollution. And the Illinois EPA agreed to work with Dynagy to contain the pollution and prepare a closure plan that would remedy the violation. While we don't yet have this plan, and I want to make sure that's clear, we don't. We do know from meeting with Dynagy and from statements issued by Dynagy and now uh, Vistra, their, their, their uh, partner that they've merged with, that Dynagy hopes to obtain approval to cap the pits, stabilize the riverbanks, and leave the ash permanently in place. But it's now nearly six years since the notice of violation was issued. And during that time, the pollution has continued and no fines have been imposed. If you paddle the Middle Fork past the power plant, you can see coal ash chemicals seeping from its banks. The orange, red, purple colors are indicative of coal ash contaminants flowing into the river. The IEPA sampled seeps at the oldest pit in 2008. 
Their water quality analysis confirmed that coal ash contaminants were indeed entering the river. Boron exceeded the chronic standard nearly three times, but no action was taken. Samples recently taken at seeps by Prairie Rivers Network included a toxic soup of coal ash chemicals like arsenic and barium and boron and chromium and iron and lead and manganese and many more. Uh, as you already know, I think, represented by Earth Justice, Prairie Rivers Network filed a federal lawsuit to force Donagy to clean up its toxic mess. Can a cap stop pollution? We're going to hear more about this from, from Andrew Rain. A cap would, in fact, reduce infiltration from above. But coal ash will remain in contact with the groundwater, as you see in this slide, which flows toward the river, carrying with it coal ash contaminants. This meandering river is moving west toward the coal ash pits. This photo is uh, like in the early 80s. Erosion of the riverbanks has been a concern for decades, resulting in the armory of banks along those two old pits with gabions. Another, another view looking upstream. But today, most of that armoring has deteriorated or it's been ripped away by the force of the river, leaving much of the riverbank next to these pits unprotected. In 2009, Dynagy sought approval to repair those gabions and to install new ones next to the newest east ash pit. Because this treatment was determined to be incompatible with criteria established for the National Scenic River, the National Park Service did not support it, and no action was taken, leaving banks vulnerable to more erosion. Now, the National Park Service has been consistent in their request uh, to remove and relocate the ash, which they believe is a hazard and an obstruction to this otherwise free-flowing river. And we, Ecojustice Collaborative, agree with that assessment. In 2015, major storms further eroded riverbanks. Dynagy determined that banks next to their newest ash pit had eroded 20 feet in just six years. And erosion was determined to be so severe that Dynagy sought and obtained agency approval to shore up those banks. This slide shows what, was, what they did. Uh, it shows a stabilization next to that newest ash pit that was installed last, in the fall of 2016. And while the National Park Service did approve this proposal, they continued to say that stabilization was not fully consistent with Section 10A of the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act, Act and asked for stakeholders to work together to relocate the toxic waste. As part of their closure plan sub, uh, submittals, the IEPA asked Dynagy to assess the extent of erosion next to the two older pits. And last November, Dynagy submitted a report that contained some rather alarming news. Their consultant noted that erosion is progressing an estimated two and a half to nine times faster than previously predicted. Also, along much of the 1,700 feet of riverbank that they assessed, just 15 to 30 feet remains between the toe of the slope of the berm uh, of the coal ash impoundments and the riverbank. And this uh, slide, I think, illustrates that fairly well. That's not enough area to install the same stone toe slope protection, stone toe protection stabilization that was put in place next to the new east ash pit without either regrading the berms that hold the ash back or filling in the river. Then, a near record storm in February 2018 caused further erosion. The river undercut banks ripped off more of the deteriorated gabions and sent downed trees and boulders into the banks, creating large cavernous holes. Last week, we learned that a meeting will take place this coming Friday to review options for riverbank stabilization next to the two old ash pits, and that is really good news. The banks do need to be stabilized even if the ash is moved. But what are the risks of leaving the coal ash permanently in place in the floodplain? We're going to hear from a panel of experts on that shortly. No stabilization lasts forever. The river is going to continue to work to reclaim its floodplain. Will the taxpayer bear the responsibility and cost of monitoring and maintaining these pits and riverbank stabilization, or potentially clean up if there's a catastrophic spill once Dynagy leaves? 
The IEPA has said to us they don't have the authority to require Dynegy to post a bond for that purpose. Shouldn't Dynegy, the utility who owns these pits, be held accountable now for cleaning up the mess? The recent merger of Dynegy and Vistra has, according to Vistra's reporting, resulted in a company with a combined net worth of $20 billion. And coal ash is being moved at many locations across the country. Here are some examples. Duke Energy is relocating its ash to mine facilities in Asheville, Mooresville, Eden, Wilmington, Mount Holly, and Goldsboro, North Carolina, as well as Belton in South Carolina. Georgia Power is removing its ash from 17 pounds located next to lakes or rivers. And in addition to the cleanup of the Kingston uh, uh, coal ash spill in uh, Tennessee, the Tennessee Valley Authority is relocating ash from its Gallatin plant. It's being done. Shouldn't it be done here too? In 2012, there was a plan prepared for ash relocation by a civil engineer and submitted to the IEPA. This plan shows the potential for relocating ash on Dynegy's property to a properly designed landfill, uh, which would reduce costs. But Dynegy is not, as far as I know, taking this plan seriously, despite the EPA's request to address feasibility and cost of this on-site alternative. The experts that are going to follow me will provide information uh, that, that uh, we hope uh, the IEPA, who is with us tonight, and, and you'll hear from, from Rick Cobb in a moment, uh, but we hope that, that the IEPA will take these comments into consideration as Dynagy's closure plan is reviewed. We also ask each of you to stand up and make a comment at the public comment se session that was referred to by Senator Bennett. Remember, there is no official public hearing process, and this is the time to get your voice and your opinions uh, heard. And in closing, I just have to ask, what, what is the benefit to Vermilion County and the city of Danville if the ash is left on the banks of the Vermilion River? What's the benefit to Danville? What's the benefit to the county? Now's the time to advocate for its removal. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm.